In this study, we looked at the combination of three different drugs, acalabrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab, and really there is strong rationale for triplet combinations in CLL. Um, that stems from using three drugs that have three distinct mechanisms of action. We know each of these drugs is effective uh, in targeting CLL cells. Additionally, there have been studies investigating triplet novel agent regimens, specifically of ibrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab in CLL. And while those studies showed very high rates of uh, clinical responses, as well as MRD negativity, there were characteristic toxicities of ibrutinib seen, particularly with regard to cardiovascular side effects and some GI and musculoskeletal side effects as well. And so in this study, we sought to employ a better tolerated BTK inhibitor, acalabrutinib, in a triplet regimen. So uh, briefly to review kind of the treatment uh, schema or study design, um, the three agents involved, as I said, are acalabrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab. And uh, very briefly, patients started with one cycle alone of acalabrutinib. Then the obinutuzumab was started on cycle two and given for a total of six cycles. And then venetoclax was added at cycle four and we actually included an abbreviated ramp up. So patients received 50 milligrams on, the, on day two of that cycle. Then at cycle 16, so after 15 cycles on study, uh, patients were assessed for the primary endpoint with full uh, restaging as well as MRD testing. And at that juncture, there was a decision regarding treatment continuation. So if patients had achieved a complete response with undetectable MRD in the bone marrow, they had the option of discontinuing therapy. Um, otherwise, patients who continued on therapy received an additional nine cycles of acalabrutinib and venetoclax before restaging again at cycle 25. Uh, in total, uh, the, in terms of the results we presented at ASH, there are 68 patients enrolled at the time of data cutoff. 31 of those patients had been part of an initial all-comer cohort, whereas uh, 37 of, excuse me, 37 of those patients had been part of an all-comer cohort, and 31 were part of an expansion cohort. So one of the really notable findings uh, in the results from the initial all-comer cohort was that we saw similar clinical outcomes in patients regardless of their TP53 status. And so we enrolled a second cohort specifically for patients with high-risk disease. So only those patients with TP53 aberrant disease. And uh, this at ASH, that was the first time we were reporting on results, including specifically that cohort of high-risk patients. Yeah, so um, very encouraging. We saw very high rates of uh, clinical response and MRD negativity with this triplet regimen. So um, as, I, as I was discussing about the primary endpoint, so in this study, we set the primary endpoint as the rate of complete response with undetectable MRD in the bone marrow. And in all patients, 43% of them achieved that primary endpoint. And specifically in the subset of patients with TP53 aberrant disease, 45% also achieved that primary endpoint of a complete response with undetectable MRD in the bone marrow. And then across the board, we saw high rates of undetectable MRD, both in the peripheral blood and the bone marrow, as measured by uh, multicolor flow cytometry, rates over 80% uh, in, in both blood and bone marrow. And again, really no significant differences regard, uh, with regard to TP53 status. Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, we at this point are reporting on a median follow up of just under three years. And at this point, we are seeing very high rates of progression free survival. So, a 93% progression free survival at that median follow up of just under three years. We are, of course, continuing to, to uh, gather information on longer term follow up for these patients. And really, I, you know, our study provides a foundation for this time-limited triplet in patients uh, with high-risk CLL. There is an ongoing phase three trial, which you may be aware of, that is uh, investigating, it's a randomized study, so investigating a doublet combination, so acalabrutinib and venetoclax versus this triplet, acalabrutinib, venetoclax, and obinutuzumab versus standard chemoimmunotherapy. And so that will provide head-to-head -head data on uh, the doublet versus triplet 
But notably, that study does uh, only enrolls patients with non-high risk CLL. And so um, while that study will provide very important and foundational results to establishing a potential role for this triplet in standard of care, our study really uh, will provide the foundation for that specifically in patients with high risk CLL. Thank <music> you.